Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you in the month of December, since it is Christmas time and the holiday time, about Sister Sister Season 3 Christmas. I love Sister Sister. I've actually never talked about it here on this show. But I grew up watching this show and I loved it to death. It aired on ABC. I can't remember if it was on um, part of TGI Friday or not. I think it came on Wednesdays. Uh, I think it was actually a CBS show to tell you the truth because on the DVD it says CBS. And a lot of times that happened. Like Sabrina was a CBS show that was on ABC. And just like with Sabrina, when it went over to the WB, it just didn't feel the same. It kind of sucked. Like, they got rid of Roger, they was in college, and then they got these two new boyfriends, and the show just got more mature instead of being this wacky, silly little self. But I remember I used to love this show, like, Tia and Tamara um, Mori, I remember just seeing them, thinking myself, I've never seen people who look like them before on TV. They were, like, these young, like, biracial black um, and white, like, teens and they had like this curly long hair and they were just like full of smiles and they dressed very colorful in 90s and it was just like a fresh a breath air to see like on tv you know and so like i just i think this was probably also the first twins i've ever seen on tv that i actually knew that were twins you know of course i saw full house and the olsen twins but i didn't know they were twins at that time and so, like, it wasn't until much later. And so, like, this was just a cool show. Plus, it had Jack Hay in it. And I remember her from 227 and stuff. Um, the father of the show. I never watched that older show that he was in. But, yeah, it was just, like, a really cool show, man. And it was just, like, like people love this show. It's on Hulu. They have two different types of DVD box sets. And so, like, yeah. Check this out. This is a great show. So, the Christmas episode. The girls have been, like, saving up their money. And Tia, who is the smart one. And there's Tamara, who is, like, the dumb one. And so, like, it's easy to tell them apart. Not even just because of the mole. Because one has a mole, one doesn't. Tamara has the mole. One is actually darker um, Tia is darker than um, Tia, and sometimes they're the same complexion for whatever project they're in. But you know what's weird? It's like after they did this show, they worked separately for like years um, doing individual type stuff. I know Tamara did Strong Medicine, I'm not sure what Tia did. And then um, they reunited for Twitches and Twitches 2, and Twitches. They decided to change from the book and make it to how they met, like in the TV show. You know what's oddly enough is that these two, like whenever they post pictures of themselves on Instagram, they don't take pictures together. I don't even know if they live in the same city or not. They probably live in different states. But I know there's a weird thing going on on Twitter, but those two don't like they they don't always get along. But I don't know. Who knows? It's Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Like. You'll see somebody name trending and then you spend like hours and hours trying to figure out why it's trending, but you can't find out why, you know? So, sister, sister, a quick synopsis. Um, there are these two girls, Tia and Tamara. They're these biracial black twins, which I didn't even know they were like biracial. I just assumed they were black until that one episode that showed like their white father who had found them and stuff. And so like they were separated at birth and then they were at the mall, like individually, separately. And then they like turned around. I think they saw each other and like, oh my God, you look just like me and all this other stuff. And it's like the funniest thing. So their two parents, um, Tamara's dad is like rich and Tia's mom is poor. So they decide they want the girls to be together. So they're gonna move in together. And of course they can't stay with um, Tia because uh, her mom is poor, so they go live with ray who is like rich and stuff and so they just bonded ever since and they have a neighbor named roger who's in love with like tamara's so and then he falls in love with like both of them but he can't get none of them and stuff <clears throat> so 
like they had saved up money for the holidays, right? And so um, Tia saved up $490 and Tamara saved up $8. <laughs> and they plan on buying gifts and they're like excited and all this other stuff. And then so Tamara's grandfather, who was raised dad, decided to come and visit, played by none other than the legend himself, the late, great Sherman Helmsley. And he is hilarious in this role. Now he is a legend from back in like the 70s and the 80s. He was on the Jeffersons, he was on Amen. And then he had a show in the 90s on UPN. It didn't last that long. I think maybe only one season, which is ironic because there's a girl in this episode. I forget the actress name. I think it's Bianca Larson or something like that. She was in this episode, but then also um, she played like his granddaughter in that UPN show. So, like, he comes in talking about how he has this great job and this and that, right? So, they're at the mall. And, like, Tia's mom, she is a fashion, like, she, she um, designed clothes and she has, like, a boutique cart in the mall. I totally forgot about that. Like, I haven't watched this series since it first came on. And so, like... Now that I have it on DVD, I can watch it, but I've been so busy lately. And so, like, it seems that Grandfather isn't really, like, telling the truth about, like, his business and stuff. Now, the one thing about Sherman Helmsley, he has this specific walk that he had um, in all his TV shows. He has kind of like this weird swagger swaying type walk that he does in, like, everything. Now, I am going to review this one show he was in. I had no idea he was in it until I watched it years ago. It didn't get picked up. Boy, I could not believe he voiced this character. I couldn't even believe they tried to make a reboot of this show. But it failed in the pilot. So, yeah. Get ready for that one day. <laughs> I'm probably going to try to do that like really soon. If it's still on YouTube. I hope it is. If not, I'm just going to have to like do it all from memory, which I don't remember much, but I could not believe they rebooted this. Like, when, I, when I read that, I'm like, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and so like, so he's hiding something, right? So Tia, she's home and she's writing her pen pal from another country. And so like some guys at the door, it's this Italian mobster dude, like the stereotypical Italian mobster dude. And he talked about how the grandfather owes a thousand dollars. Oh, I'm so sorry for yawning. I am so tired. I don't even know what time it is. Is it like 12, 1, something like that? So he said he owes a thousand dollars and he doesn't pay up. He's gonna get his kneecaps broken and you know, you know, gangster talk. And so he leaves, but then Tamara's all like, wait a minute, Mr. Gangster. He's still by the front door. <laughs> And she gives him the $498 that she had. And he tells her that the rest needs to come by tomorrow and stuff. So she's worried. Now, Tia's mom already knew about that. Because the dad, the grandfather kind of let it slip. Now, he doesn't want to tell his son. You know, his son will let him borrow the money. Because he, he was never there as a father for his son. He has a gambling problem. He was never there for Christmas. He never, like, took him to see Santa Claus, this and that. So Lisa, who is Tia's mom, played by Jack K. Harris, she um got him a job working at Santa and stuff, right? So Tia goes there, she's frantic, and the moms are like, she knows, and then she goes to tell like Tamara, and Tamara's like, yeah, I know, he's working at Santa. And so, but she tells them she had to give the money up. Tamara's pissed, she's all like, eight of that dollar of mine. <laughs> So, also in this episode, Roger shows up with um this one dude, this actor. I forget his name. He was in an episode of Charmed. He was in, um, ooh, what's that movie called? I think it's called Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, he was the redhead who saw Paradise City. He was also the son to, um... The one woman from Miss Congeniality, the one who ran the pageant, the, the bomber dude, 
So, like, yeah, he's in there. He's helping Roger set up, like, a tree. And Roger wants, like, a kiss from the girl, um, Tamara. But she doesn't want him to. He's always striking out. Like, I think um, the catchphrase is always, go home, Roger, <laughs> and stuff. Boy, the show got less funny when he left the show. And so, like, um, she tells him straight up about, like, the gangster and all this other stuff. So, they agree, like, to get jobs, you know what I'm saying? And so, they get jobs at the mall. Um, T is a Santa's helper, and Tamara, I think get like what she um what kind of job she got and stuff but um so like you know tia tells the grandfather like hey the long shark came by and all this other stuff so he's worried and talking about how he can't borrow money from like his son and stuff like that so then the long shark comes back on christmas eve and he talks to lisa and she's worried and stuff right and, you know, it was so cool to see her in this role. Because when she played Jack K, like, watch 227 if you can find it anywhere. Completely different character. Like, you will not believe it. And so, like, she gets worried and she gives the gangster dude 500 bucks. And so, like, um, now that that's all taken care of, Ray's like walking around the house talking about how y'all ain't gonna kill his like Christmas spirit and stuff and then next thing you know the gangster dude comes back and he wants to give him the receipt this dude is thorough you gotta give him up for that and so he tells him straight up why um, he's giving him the receipt for the grandfather so now Ray knows and he's pissed he heads out to the mall and um He's talking to Lisa and Lisa's all like he's over there, but he's with a bunch of kids for like Santa. So he trying to talk to his dad, but these kids don't want him to because they don't want him to cut in line. So in order for him to talk to his dad, he has to sit on his lap and do the Santa thing. Now it's funny. One of the little boys in this episode, um, he's from Full on uh, Full House. He played Michelle. No, 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 not Michelle. Maybe yeah, maybe he played Michelle's friend. Or maybe he played, um, let's show these kids, Stephanie's friend. He, he played one of those two friends. I don't remember which one. So it was like a little black kid. And it was funny is this is Taj Ma uh, Maori. Uh, no, I know I said his name wrong. Um, Taj Maury. Um, he is the real life brother of T Tia and Tamara. Now, T and Tamara, they pronounce their last name Mori, but a lot of people think it's Maori because it's M O W E R Y and stuff. But it's Mori, like the talk show hosts do. And so, like, you know, he's pissed at his dad, talking about how, like, you should have just asked me for the money and this and that. And the dude's all like, you know, I couldn't do that, you know, like, I'm your father and I wasn't there for you. And he tells him straight up how he wanted this Phantom Racer bike from back in like the 70s and, or 60s or something. And his dad never got it. So, towards the end of the episode, his grandfather, on the, on the grandfather comes back, he pays everybody back their money. And say he got a job like um, taking Santa classes or teaching them something like that. And he asked for like a bonus and everything. Or in advance, I should say. And so, like, he gives his son the um, racer bike, the phantom bike that he wanted all along when he was younger and stuff. And then, so, like, um, Roger talking about when he was riding around just to, like, you know, break it in. A bunch of girls are, like, looking at him. And I think oh, Tamara's talking about this is the first time girls ever looked at you. <laughs> or something like that. So then it ends with all of them, like, you know, looking into the camera and saying happy holidays. It was a cool episode. Like, it, it wasn't one of those. Oh, and then now when they do that, some strange thing happened. They pan outside and over the roof, you see Santa Claus and his sleigh and the reindeer flying over the house. I'm like, ho, ho, ho. I'm just like, really? They, they threw that in? And it was some of the crappiest CGI <laughs> and stuff. But, you know, this is such a cool little episode. Like, it's different. That's what I liked about these holiday episodes when they're different. I get so tired of everybody trying to save Christmas and stuff like that. 
And it was so good to relive this like episode. Cause I'm not telling you, man, watch Sister Sister. It was a hilarious show and everything. Bah humbug, that was a good episode. All right, everybody, I'll talk to you later. Bye.